<laughs> oh, shit. Hi friends, welcome to this week's class of Dead Funny University. I am your host and fellow student Kelsey, and today we are talking about Dead by Daylight. This is a game that Chris has talked about a lot on our various whatever we've been producing, and now he's finally going to teach me about the game. Chris, how are you doing today? Doing good. Doing good. Dead by Daylight. Man, it's been a minute. It has been yeah, a minute. I feel like since Final Fantasy VII came out, that's been both of our lives. <sighs> so how long has it been since you played Dead by Daylight? Oh, it's got to be a couple months. Oh, kind of like didn't they make some kind four. of an update to it recently? They have. I mean, well, that's the thing. The game is forever changing. They're constantly still adding characters and stuff like that. So usually, when they oh. add in a new killer, they add in two new survivors as well, and so on and so forth. And those all come with their own perks and how those change and shit like that. So, well, cool. Well, <laughs> do you have a quiz for me, or do you want to just jump into the game? Yeah, I got a quiz. We can start off with our Yo-yo. first five. Okay, so. Who are the developers of Dead by Daylight? I have no fucking clue. Cool. When was Dead by Daylight released? 2017. Mm, That's actually close. What platform was it released on? Oh, I feel like I do know this. I'm going to guess Xbox. What genre is it? Horror? Hey, you got hey. one right. <laughs> What are the two selections of characters the player can choose from? I'm going to guess killer or survivor. Yes, and that's because I just said that. So I was like, if she yes, doesn't get this one. I was going to say, one, you fed me that. <laughs> <laughs> if she doesn't get this one, I'm going to be surprised. I for sure thought you would get number four, which was the whole horror genre. So that one, Yay. we're good. Okay, we're good. We're good. <laughs> okay, so Dead by Daylight. Dead by Daylight was released in uh, June or on June fourteenth, twenty sixteen. It's actually on multiple platforms: Xbox, PlayStation. I believe it's on the Switch now, um, which is weird for Nintendo. But you know, hey, Nintendo's kind of shaking it up. So you know. Yeah, I was gonna say they don't. They do family friendly, right? That's kind of their yeah, thing. Yeah, that's that. That used to be their thing, and then they kind of got away with that with the Wii a little bit, and then even more with the Switch. I mean, they got shit on there like the Binding of Isaac, <laughs> which is. A very interesting video game to be on the Switch. So, um, it was released on all those platforms, PC, all that fun stuff. Um, I started out by playing it on the PC, and then I moved to Xbox. I had some friends on the Xbox. Um, But ultimately, if I had a choice, I played on the PC just because the graphics are rendered way better on my PC than they'll ever be on my Xbox. Um, But, uh, yeah, so whenever the game starts, basically it is a ratio of four to one four survivors one killer you start out a lobby searching for a game being the role you want to be whether it's a killer or survivor and if you got multiple Mm -hmm. people you can even do a public or a private match where it's five of your friends one of you are the killer and the other survivors which is also really really fun too Uh, i've had a lot of drinking nights where we've all gone in and done that which was really really fun um, now, if you're doing a private room, do you have control over who becomes the killer, or can you just have it randomly assigned? Uh, yeah, you, you have control, because the person can switch on or off. So the person can oh, switch cool. off, and then you can switch on, too. So basically, we would take turns. You know, every game, someone else would be the killer. So done that plenty of times. Um, so basically, what the game is, is that you start out... And what's kind of cool is, is like the way this game works is that it has its own killers, that its own lore, and stuff like that, too. And its own like levels and shit, but it also has uh, two iconic killers that a lot of people know. Maybe even more by now, but from the last time I played it, which really wasn't too too long ago, like four months, they had Freddy Krueger and Michael Myers. So Freddy from um, Nightmare on Elm Street and Michael Myers from uh, Halloween. Okay, we need to do a reality check. Michael Myers sounds like a famous person. Not a serial killer. Is there a Mike Myers that has nothing to do with I have no idea. I would just be surprised that you're not thinking of the Michael Myers that is the actual serial killer. Because that's how big he is in lore. Like, I mean, they literally just had a new movie about him, like, last year. So, I mean, his movies are still continuing. It's called Halloween. It was actually the last one that just happened. He wears the white rubber mask and walks around with a butcher knife. That's who Michael Myers is. No, there's an actor. Okay. Oh, is that there's the guy a famous that, actor? Is that the guy that does Austin Powers? 
Yes. Yeah, okay. Okay. There we go. That would be the guy. Okay. You know, I, I thought about it as con- you said that. I think this has confused me more than once because people have said Mike Myers, and I was thinking Austin Power- Powers guy. I've never watched Austin Py- Powers, but I have enough to like awareness that to know that he did that. And then people have talked about Michael Myers as a serial killer, and I've been very confused about the turn that Austin Powers took at some point. Well, now you'll and know. so. Yeah. You know, I, I'm not sure this is going to clear up my confusion, but this at least helps me realize there are two people. Yeah. <laughs> separate. Austin beings. Powers is a British joke James Bond. It's literally what Austin Powers is. Yes, it's I once British had a boyfriend who was David. shocked that I hadn't seen them and decided oh. that I absolutely had to because it was going to change my life. And I watched roughly five minutes and then oh. came up with an excuse to leave and hated it. Mm. Oh. Hated Anybody who watches Austin Powers and thinks that it changes lives, you, you've got very low standards. Um, yes, this man was not for me. There you go. <clears throat> God damn it, Scott. Like, come on, dude. <laughs> <laughs> this was not Scott. I, oh, my God, no. Oh, shit. Anyways, um, <clears throat> but yeah, so that's what Austin Powers is. Michael Myers, just to kind of go <laughs> quickly into his little background here. Um, he murdered his whole family. And tried to kill his sister, but didn't actually get a chance to kill his sister. Um, she, her name is Lori Strode, and she is. I mean, you're never gonna watch the movies anyway, so it really doesn't fucking mm-hmm. matter. But um, she basically like the last, the last movie she had been training for his like return because like he always gets locked up and then he always re- gets broken out of prison da, 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 da. she'd been training for his um, return so she fucking kills him like she finishes it she's like i'm like she she was badass like holy fuck she went fucking around it was crazy it wasn't one of those like awesome. the killer accidentally fucking gets himself killed type deal like no she had guns her whole fucking house was kitted and ready to go she wasn't fucking around and she ended up trapping him in the basement and lit that whole fucking house on fire. It was like, it is done. Like, oh, it was crazy. But anyways, he's the one that walks around with the white mask on and the fucking butcher knife. That's who Michael Myers is. <clears throat> okay, is and Freddy Krueger? Freddy Krueger is the one where he was a... It's kind of open on whether he was a pedophile or not. It's been, I think, in one story it was, one story it wasn't. I can't remember... The original origin, but I do know he was basically a maintenance man for a elementary school. The story I remember, he was an el- he was a maintenance man for the elementary school, and then people, a little girl went missing, and the little girl was always seen talking to him. Mm. <clears throat> so the parents automatically thought that it was him, grabbed him, and th- threw him in the boiler or whatever, and burned him up alive and killed him. They, they, they killed his ass. And so he... Was this like vigilante justice? Like yes. you don't throw people in boilers. Yes. And so he now haunts everybody on that street, Elm Street. He can haunt their dreams and kill them in their sleep. And if you die in sleep, you die in real life. <clears throat> ah, okay. Yep. And they actually had one movie called Freddy vs. Jason. Which Jason yeah, is the, the hockey is mask he? killer, the dude with the machete at the Camp Crystal Lake. None of this is ringing okay. a bell with you. Good lord. Okay, Jason is a completely different killer. There's like a whole killer universe, like you know the Marvel universe. There's like a whole killer universe. Jason is the oh, hockey mask killer. I was picturing Jason when, when you, you said Michael, Michael Myers. Myers. A lot of people think that you should probably look at Michael Myers so that way you know what he looks like. But anyways. There actually was a movie where Freddy, where it was Freddy versus Jason, and uh, basically they had one of the kids go to sleep, and whenever they gra- or whenever they got in there, they, their whole thing was to grab J- Freddy and then wake up with him in their arms, and like they actually brought him into the real world, and it was like a fucking smackdown between fucking Freddy versus Jason. It was actually a badass movie. Why <laughs> did Jason want to? Because. Who's the biggest cock on the walk? That's what it is. You're killing my fucking school kids. These are my school kids to kill. You're in my territory. This is my camp. Yeah. Wow, they fucking, they went at it. Dealing with so many first world problems, I didn't realize yeah. there are serial killer problems. It's like turf, the you know? Too small. Yeah. It's turf. This is my turf. Back up. Yeah. So, <clears throat> anyways, okay. now that you're up to speed on who Michael Myers is, and that's, Jay, and that's Freddy. 
Um, they actually just redid Freddy, and that was uh, actually really, really good because they used the guy that played Rorschach from The Watchmen, which was also really, really awesome. So he did a really, really good job. But <clears throat> that's who I wanted to play Carnage in the new Venom movie, but they did get him. Yes. Woody Harrelson. Hopefully Woody Harrelson does a good job. We'll, we'll see. see. But anyway, so back to Dead by Daylight because we kind of just went off on a horror movie rant there. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so We're dealing with a deep level of ignorance here. Let's be real. We are. The cool part is that they'll use those characters and they'll also use like moments from their movies for a stage. Oh, cool. Which is awesome. So like the fucking neighborhood street that Jason was on, they fuck, uh, that, that grew up on, they actually, or not Jason, sorry, Michael. Jason's not in the game. Michael, that Michael grew up on, they have that as a, like one of the fucking levels you start out in that little neighborhood. So <laughs> your character starts out, let's say, let's, let's go ahead and say we're from the looking from the view of the survivor. You okay. start out as a survivor. It's third person gaming. Um, you have five reactors on the map. Your job is to try to activate those five reactors because they're art actors, generators. I'm, I'm not saying reactors. Good I Lord. was going to say, you may or may not be playing Final Fantasy VII, my friend. No shit. Jesus. Okay. Let's put Midgar away. Anyways, so generators there are five generators on the map that you have to go and activate uh, it takes 80 seconds to activate a generator by yourself up to three people can work on a generator at a time that's without any perfect skill checks and without any special perks that help out all survivors have different perks and if you master a survivor you master their perks which at which then can be bought in another survivor skill tree so you can actually transfer Ooh. perks to different survivors trying to make your ultimate survivor it's completely That's up cool. To you. Yeah, it's really awesome. Like my favorite chick, her name is uh, Fing Mei. I call her Fing Bei. Fing Bei is a beast. And what I like about her is that the skills that I have on her is that whenever I'm crouch, I walk just as fast as I do walking while crouching, which is mm -hmm. extremely useful because I have her wearing pretty much all black, so that way I can stay crouched and low to the ground and be around trees and rocks. And there's a little low mist of fog in the ground too. So it is easy to miss because the killers see through first person. The survivors ah. see the entire map around them. The killers can only see through their eyes. So it's very easy to miss somebody if you're like on a mission trying to do something. Now, if a killer is has a mask, does that reduce what he can see? No, they still have okay. it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. And did you say... Fink, like Fing. mink, but with Fing. an F? Fing, F-E-N-G, Fing Mei. F-E-N-G, okay. I call her Fing Mei. Yeah. And then I'm another glad. one of her awesome skills is that whenever she is working on a generator, if you fuck up your skill check, which basically is like this wheel that pops up and you got to hit a button right at a certain mark, if you fuck that up, it makes the generator backfire and it alerts the killer because that noise goes off and alerts the killer that there's somebody at the generator. So then he mm. knows to go over there to possibly try to catch somebody. Or if someone else fucks it up and I'm working on it, it has a chance to silence that noise. And by me mastering it, it's like a pretty fucking hot chance. <clears throat> so um, there's that. And whenever you get all five generators up, it powers two emergency switches, one at each door. There are a total of three exits, two doors, and one trap door. The trap door can only be activated after all the generators are on. If you find a key, you can open it early. Or if all the generators are on and a certain amount of your team has died, then the trap door is activated and you have to try to find it. And it's not easy to find. You have to run around the map until you hear like a wind sound, just kind of mm -hmm. like, like that. That alerts you that you're near the trap door. If you get that, you can just jump out. Because the doors, whenever you go to those, you have to hold down the switch. And it takes a while. It's probably like a solid like 30, 40 seconds. Which doesn't sound like a lot, but it's a lot whenever you got a killer fucking chasing you. Because it alerts the killer that you're over there trying to open the door the entire time. <clears throat> so the best thing to do is that if you obviously have a team, two people go to one door, one plays lookout, and two people go to the other door, one plays lookout. And then whoever gets the killer at them, the other people just are going to get the door open. That's going to happen. And your lookout lets you know you both fucking try to scram and get the fuck away and then make it over to the other door and then escape. <clears throat> so once a door is open, anybody can leave through it. Anybody can leave through it. <clears throat> the killer okay. cannot go through. Like, they can go in the doorway, 
Mm-hmm. But once they get to a certain part, they can't go past that. So even if they hit you, if you get past that little, it's like a black mist, your character is considered safe. Like I literally okay. had a killer hit me and down me. And then as the killer was cleaning off their blade, because they make the killer do slow animations to kind of give your people a chance. As the killer uh-huh. was cleaning off a blade, I was able to crawl far enough to make it into the mist. And my person just crawled the fuck out and the killer couldn't do anything. And I was safe. <clears throat> That's awesome. Was the killer really furious? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I sent him a message. So I was like, haha, you fucking suck. So, that's great. Of course you did. Absolutely. You said there are three doors, a trap door, and something else? Three doors, one of those being a trap door. Oh, okay. Got it. Got it. Three, got it. three exits total, two being actual doors with so switches, and one being a trap door. Trap door is harder to get. It's better to go for the doors, but those also alert the killer as well. <clears throat> mm hmm. So, yeah, it's definitely a very interesting game. Basically, the killer's job is to go around and kill as many people on the map as possible. You don't even have to get all of them because you still get points based off the amount that you do kill. <clears throat> Basically, the way that the killing aspect works is that there are some killers that get a special perk where they can actually insta-kill, which is actually pretty nuts. Like That's insane, into a certain yeah. thing, They can actually insta-kill you. There are some killers like Michael Myers who also has an insta-down as well. So, like, basically, Michael Myers is known for, like, always staring at his victims in the movie. So, if Michael Myers can focus on you long enough and stare at you without you knowing, he'll go into his, like, rage mode. And then if he hits you, you go down automatically. To where in the game, you got to get hit twice to actually go down. And then at that point, your teammates can come and heal you because you can crawl around. You're on your stomach. At that Mm -hmm. point, your teammates can heal you. But if the killer just grabs you, they'll throw you over their shoulder, and you could try to struggle to break free. Normally, it's kind of hard to break free if, unless there's, like, really not a hook close to you or the killer's just being a dick and trying to walk around and do whatever he wants to do. But if you can break free, great. You'll, you'll run away with only one hit on you, so you'll still need to be healed up. But you can officially move versus crawling. The killer takes this you sounds to... sounds terrifying. Oh, it is. If the killer takes you to a hook... He grabs you and sticks you on this gigantic meat hook, like straight through your fucking stomach, right onto this meat hook, and your person's just standing and sitting there screaming. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's violent. <clears throat> yep. So then it's up to your team to try to get the killer away from you, because then someone comes and takes you off the hook, bandages you back up, and then you're able to go again. The killer has so... to do this three times total to kill you. On the third hook, you die instantly. You're instantly dead. Now, do the hooks pop up anywhere, or are they're, the hooks in set locations, so he's going to take you to them? Yep, they're in set locations. Mm-hmm. Okay, and he has to put you yeah. on a hook three times to die, or everybody, just one person on a hook three no, times? No, no. Yeah, yeah, just one person on a hook three times, and that kills that person. The other three people are still in the game. Oh, okay, got yep. it. So, yeah. Everybody has their own independent lives. Now, that's only judged off if your people get you off quick enough. If your people don't get you off quick enough and you hit down to like half, it's called the entity is this thing. It's like these alien fucking legs that come out. I don't know. It's weird. It's like these claws. And like it will try to start try to start killing you. Because basically that's what the killer is doing. It's sacrificing you to the entity is what it's called. That's yeah. valuable information. Yeah. What? Yeah. I, I don't know what the entity is. They've never really talked about it. It's just the entity. So, so the killer isn't killing you for the giggles of being a serial killer. The killer is trying to assuage or appease something else. I guess so. Yeah, it's called the entity. So if you hit half health while you're on the hook, the entity claws come down. They try to start hitting you, and you actually have to struggle against the entity by tapping a button as fast as you can until somebody comes and gets you. If you don't, the entity kills you automatically, and then you're taken. So if people can grab you before the entity comes, you will get a second time to be on the hook before the entity actually takes you. And then the third time will kill you. If they don't do it, then you only get two chances on the hook. Now, some characters have a luck skill where they can actually get off the hook themselves. It's not easy. It's actually very hard. And it also hurts you doing it. So you actually bring your life down faster. So unless you know you're actually going to get it, or there's just like no other like that would be one of those situations like let's say me you Brandon and Dylan were playing right, and you Brandon and Dylan are all down and I'm on the hook and the killer's just going around picking you up one at a time. That would be a moment at which I would then try to get myself off the hook so then I can run and try to pick up one of you while he's hooking the other person and us have a chance to come back. There that would be. Now if you get hooked and all three of your people are up, I don't recommend it because you're just going to waste a lot of health because I mean the percentage rate I think is like 13 percent chance. It's extremely low. 
So it has happened. I've done it myself. It has happened, but it's extremely low. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> um, so that's pretty much what the killer's there to do is just to kind of kill as many people as he can to stop. You know, or before before they leave, and if you get everybody great, you got a perfect game. It's awesome. So, so how does the survivor win versus how the killer wins? Walk me through that. Survivor leaves. That's 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 the win for you. The survivor okay. wins. Okay, and if, if they even leave. one survivor makes it out, the killer loses. See, that's the thing. There's not really a win or a lose unless the killer kills all the survivors or all the survivors make it out. If the killer just gets one, it's really not even like a win scenario because the killer doesn't have to kill everybody. If it just kills one, every time the killer downs somebody, he gets points. Every time the killer puts somebody up on a thing, they get points. So they really don't even have to kill people. They get more points if they do and they get a kill. That's mm -hmm. great. The more kills they get, the more points they're going to get. But there's not really a win-loss situation unless like you literally just start, stop the other team. Like if the killer kills everybody, the killer won. Like you, you didn't get shit. If the fucking survivors fucking win, the killer's not going to get shit because the survivors won. All four of them escaped. It's going to hurt your points if everybody leaves. And that's kind of okay. where that's at. <clears throat> so this is a battle to get as many points as you can get, not necessarily... Because yeah. the more okay. you rank up, because basically what happens is that after you get out of a game, if you get enough points to rank up, it opens up like the spider web and you spend what they're called blood points on buying new skills and items from the, the bloody spider web. The killers don't really get new items, the survivors do. The items can be a flashlight that they can shine in the killer's eyes whenever they have like a person on their shoulder and it will actually re make them release the person from their shoulder. Or if they're oh, trying neat. to get away, they can shine it in their eyes and it stuns them for like five seconds. Um, one of my favorite things is a toolbox because it can be used multiple well it used to be and then they patched it early on and now it's kind of somewhat different but not really but basically a toolbox can be used two different ways one you could use it to help fix a generator faster or two you can use it to sabotage a hook so if you use it to sabotage a hook you will literally break that hook and it's gone that killer cannot use that hook Ooh. now there is always a hook set in the basement is what we call it or as other people like to call it the sex dungeon but anyways so the basement there's always a basement on the map the basement and there's it, it looks the same every single time but it's got like eight hooks on it you can't sabotage that so that way the killer for sure will always have a hook but mm -hmm. if i down you upstairs and you guys are taking out all the hooks upstairs you have a very good chance of getting away by struggling on my shoulder for me to get you all the way downstairs to the basement because while you struggle, it makes like it makes me sway back and forth as I'm trying to walk because you're struggling. So my character's waving back and forth as I'm trying to walk straight to get you down there. So it does slow the killer's movement. <clears throat> okay. So. so this is one of the... The way we're talking about this now, it sounds like this is weighted heavily, or up to this point, has been weighted heavily in the killer's favor. But you're telling me that there's actually a lot that can be done to nerf or that has been done to nerf the killer to make it so that we have a chance like they have slow animations and that gives you time to there, crawl away there maybe is get up. but we haven't even talked about killer perks yet like oh, my boy. favorite killer is the wraith and what he does he has this death toll bell and he rings it three times which lets people know where he is but then he turns invisible you can't see uh huh him. So I can walk up on somebody and then ring my bell. I can wait till they're deep in the middle of a generator. By the time their character actually gets off that generator, I'm coming out of invisibility. I'm hitting you. It's happening. I'm going to down you. That's going to happen. And if I have insta-kill on, I can down you, and you can only pull one insta-kill a game. But I can instantly kill you without even taking you to a hook. I just take my weapon out just murder you right there on the spot. That one is the murder for the shits and giggles. That one doesn't go to the entity. So that's just for the, the killer. You have to have that perk. It's not an easy perk to get. You have to rank up a lot. Um, but there is stuff that the survivors can use, like throwing down pallets, because killers can't jump pallets. They have to break them down um, and shit like that. But the, in my opinion, the game is way heavily favored towards the killers. And depending on which killers, it's even worse. Like, Freddy Krueger was so broken when he first came out, it was ridiculous. Because he only had to be, like, within a 10-foot radius of you. And you would start hearing his music. He wouldn't even be that close. I mean, not even 10 foot. It was way bigger than that. But he wouldn't even be that close to you. And you'd start hearing his music. And it would put your character to sleep. 
So then you oh, no. in the dream world where he can see you and you can see him. So now you have to run around and the dream world looks just like the regular one except there's just a lot of fucking smoke all over the place or fog, I guess you could uh-huh. say. So it makes it harder to see what you're doing. So you would want to go and try to sabotage a generator. So get on one and make it backfire because the sound would wake you up. Or hopefully one of your teammates would see you because you can't see them, but they would see you. Mm-hmm. And then they would tell you to stop and then they would stand next to you and they could sit there and clap their hands and try to wake you up before Freddy Krueger got a chance to grab you. <clears throat> wow. It was, it was fucking nuts. The worst one is Michael Myers. He's the fucking worst because his they call it a terror radius. So whenever a killer gets close to you, your heart starts to beat faster and you can hear it. Uh-huh. And then the scary music starts to kick up a little bit to let you know a, a, a killer is coming close. His terror radius is like three feet behind you. So by the time you even know he's there, you're you're already going to be getting hit. That's happening. 100% oh, happening. Oh, no. So people who are the absolute worst, and if any of you are watching this channel, you can go fuck yourself. But people who like to pick Michael Myers and then hook somebody, and then they just stand there and hook guard is what we call it. So they just stay next to the hook waiting mm-hmm. for people to come rescue them. If they do that with Michael Myers, you don't know he's there until you physically are right there trying to get to the hook. And then he's going to down you. Because mm-hmm. that's the only way they can win because they don't have any skill. And yes, I'm talking to anybody who does that. So that's the only way they can win because they suck at the game. So they, they sit there and they hide by the hook with Michael Myers. <clears throat> uh, so that's what the terror radius is. And that's how it's used to kind of let you know that, hey, there's a killer coming. Um, there's crows on the map that if you're going too fast, you'll scare the crows. And the crows will they'll, they'll squawk, letting the killer know that you're over there. Um, if you jump out of a house, it makes a noise. If you close doors, it makes a noise. Like anything that you could possibly do that makes a noise, it alerts the killer of your location. It pops up on their screen in a red dot of like, hey, over here. Throwing down a pallet, jumping over a pallet. Anything you can do noise related is going to happen. Even just working on a generator. It doesn't even have to be the backfire. The generator is going to make noise as it starts to start up. And as everything starts moving faster. How far away can the killer hear noises? It depends like on the across noise. the whole like map. If it's a really loud noise, like if it's a generator backfire, yeah, it's across the entire map. The entire map depends and on the noise. And is it like is there a mini map where they can see roughly where the noise came from? No, so, they so get like, an like idea, let's say or? you're looking forward and you're looking once again out of the killer's eyes, and I pop a mm-hmm. generator behind you. In front of you, it's just going to put a red circle with an arrow pointing, and then you could turn around, and whenever that arrow disappears, that means you're looking directly in that that, that vicinity of the generator. Ah, uh, so okay. Generators that way. <clears throat> and it will have the red thing over the generator. Got it. <laughs> and it's only like that for like 10 seconds, but it's enough. It's that was going to say, that's enough time enough. for people to turn easily around and start enough. running. Yeah. Yeah. Um, healing people, healing your teammates. Uh, also has skill checks, and if you fuck up a skill check, the person that you're trying to heal yells real loud. That also alerts the killer as well. Yep. Oof. So there's that as well. Yeah, there's a lot that the killer has to their advantage, in my opinion. So, yeah, sucks, but, you know, that's what it is. Now, do you normally play as a killer or as a survivor? I always play as a survivor. I like playing as a survivor. I like getting in there with my friends and stuff like that because, like, I got really big into, like, because I got really good at the game, so a lot of my friends would be like, all right, whatever Chris has as a plan, that's what we're doing. And so Aww, I, actually started, kind. I actually started getting the leadership perks and putting those on. So basically, like, if people were around me, my person worked 10% faster. Oh, cool. Which was really, really cool. So I only had to have a certain amount of people. So, like, we would do stuff where I'd be like, all right, you two watch guard. I'm going to work on this generator. Because one of those people were really, really bad at skill checks and would fuck it up every time. So, like, you guys just watch guard, and then that way I'll work on the generator, and I'll get it done just as fast as it would have been almost if all three of us had been working on it. So, mm-hmm. just depending on who you're playing, what they're good at, and stuff like that. Um, once again, certain characters have certain perks to just, you know, make them better for certain situations. Whether it's trying to rescue people from getting captured from the killer or it's sabotaging stuff around the map or it's being quicker at building shit and stuff like that. Yeah. It's, it just depends. Um, <clears throat> so yeah. And then just because we kind of talked about him earlier, uh, Jason, the guy with the hockey mask, the reason why he's not in the game is because they had already, the, another game company had already got the rights to Jason after this game first came out before they started uh-huh. doing like big name killers. And they made his own game called Friday the 13th. 
Ah. And it's the same, but different. Like, you can actually kill Jason in that game. Like, the survivors can pick up weapons on the map and actually fight back against Jason. It's hard. It's not easy. Trust me. I actually died as my survivor, and then there's a certain chance that a dead survivor will come back as, like, I think his name's Tommy or some shit. It's supposed to be, like, the ranger kid that's on campus or some shit like that. And he starts out with, like, a shotgun. And he has, like, a couple shots in it, and that's it. And I literally unloaded. I came back as Tommy and unloaded the entire shotgun into Jason and then picked up a fucking fire poker and started just beating the shit out of him. And I still got my ass kicked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So it's not easy. But with, like, Jason, the, the Friday the 13th game, there's, like, different ways to escape. There's, like, you get all these components to make a car, and then you can just leave. Or you get, or you can build all these components and make a radio service and actually call the cops in and get the cops in. Or the players can band together with preferably one of them dying and coming back as Tommy and just kill Jason outright. Like, there's multiple ways that you can actually win Friday the 13th where in Dead by Daylight it's just escape. That's your only option. Certain killers are pretty creepy, too. Like, the one that I think would get you the most is the Huntress, because she hums. Ooh, tell me about the Huntress. She is, like, this big lumberjack-looking lady, and she has, she wears a broken, like, rabbit mask on her face. And so creepy. she just runs around just humming the entire time. She's like, hmm, 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 hmm. So, like, you so know that's her music, is, yeah, yeah. you know, when she's close and you can hear her humming. Yep. And whenever and she's actually ranged too, so she can hit you up close, but she can also she has an axe and she can throw it at you. So she throws these tomahawk axes at you and can fucking hit you with that and knock you down. Some right killers can't do anything ranged, but she's definitely one of the ranged ones. Ooh, yeah, she is. She is. She is something else. There's hers. There's the nurse. She's pretty creepy too. She's got no legs. She just kind of like floats around. Uh, she looks like a nurse, a zombie-looking nurse with no face whatsoever. Uh, kind of like a mannequin head almost. And she screams. <clears throat> and she can also uh, teleport a short distance. Which is Oof. crazy. Yeah. So you think she's there and then she's right in front of you. Yep. Oh, that's terrifying. There is a drawback. She has to, like, recuperate after she teleports. So I think she, like, breathes heavy, like, three times. Where she's like... <sighs> And then she can start moving again. Well, she mm -hmm. can move that entire time, but she's just not as fast. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, there's there's so many different killers and so many different survivors. It's pretty insane. Now, Lori is Lori who Stroke. you mentioned, Michael Myers' sister. She is a survivor in the game. She yep. is one of the survivors. I was going to ask. One of her, they brought Michael. They brought her in, and they also brought one of the kids from Friday the Thirteenth in as well. And their skills are actually catered to around, like, what would be helpful against that killer, like, in the movie. So, like, uh -huh. that kid that's brought in, he's actually, uh, like, a lot more able to, one, wake himself up faster, and two, harder to put to sleep whenever he's going against Freddy. So, because they come from that movie. Because, like, in those movies, those kids try to stay up, like, fucking 48 hours straight trying to not sleep because they were fucking terrified they were going to die in their fucking sleep. And then they would start dozing off and get killed in their sleep. So, yep. That's terrifying. Yeah, it is. That's the movies that terrified me as a kid and made me not scared of scary movies anymore. Because my grandma would have me watch those with her on the weekends and then I'd go to sleep Sunday night right after watching Nightmare on Elm Street and be terrified that Freddy Krueger was going to kill me in the sleep. So, yep. Oh, man. And now this I'm not scared is, anymore. This is an MMO, right? This is what? This is no, this is not an MMO. This is just no, multiplayer. No. Yeah, this is just multiplayer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Don't rip me apart on the internet. I, I'm aware I'm wrong. I am aware I'm wrong. It's just okay. You just get a team together. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you said this was PC, Xbox, Switch, and PS4, or not PS4? Mm -hmm. Yep. All the okay. way around. Yep. You can't play together, but it's respectively on your own servers, you can. Yeah, four v one, four survivors, one killer. Got it. And are there any significant like weapons or anything like that? There's not weapons, more just like tools and stuff that I already kind of mentioned with the yeah. You mentioned the tools a little bit. First aid kits and shit like that that just make certain jobs faster. Like you can heal people faster with a first aid kit and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. it's not really actual weapons. You can use pallets 
And if you throw it down at the right time whenever a killer's chasing you, it will hit the killer and stun them. But then they can just break the pallet right afterwards. So Nice. Yeah. But, I mean, stunning them, that gives you time. Yeah, it just depends on when you're using it. A lot of people like to use those pallets early on in the game. And it's like, what are you really running from at this point? Or running towards th this point? Besides just trying to get away. It's like you're wasting all these pallets that we could use whenever we need them. Like when we're trying to get to a door because it's open. Versus <laughs> early mm -hmm. in the game, all the pallets are already down. You're like, well, fuck. Because, I mean, you could jump over them. And the killer can't, so that still like kind of slows them down a little bit because they have to go around or they have to break it. But if they just choose to just walk around and start breaking all the fucking pallets, kind of shit's creep at that point because you don't have any fucking things to kind of like easily get you over stuff. And like, so they they're just afraid of dying at all, not realizing like dying yeah. at some point or being like hooked isn't the end isn't of the, the world. End of the game, no, not even close. Yeah. Because if you got hooked and me and Brandon were working on a generator, we could be like, okay, cool. It makes more sense for me and Brandon to finish this generator because we know where he's at because he has Kelsey than both of mm -hmm. us going over there and getting hit. Because the killer can still hit people while he holds somebody as well. Mm -hmm. Then going over there and trying to rescue Kelsey and possibly taking damage if not getting downed ourselves. Yeah. So then we can get this generator while Dylan himself could be working on another generator that's close by. And we can immediately finish that one, run over there, help get that one. That killer got you hooked once out of your three times, Yes. But we just got two generators out of it. Mm hmm So. Yeah, no, that, that absolutely makes sense. And so it's a... Ideally, I imagine there's... Is there some way for... Within the game for the survivors to talk to each other? Um, yeah, you can talk to each other in the game, I believe so. If not, I mean, every system has its own party system now. So it's not like it yeah. doesn't. So, um, yeah. And the killer can can't the hear Can the killer you. hear no. the survivors talking to each other? No. And okay. what's even creepier, too, is whenever you go to pick your character, you're at a campground. So it shows you at a, like your lobby is a campground, and you're picking your survivors and stuff like that. What you don't see, and you physically can't, is from the other direction, there's a tree right to the left. Behind that tree, off in the tall grass, the killer is picking his character, and it's staring directly at the campground. Oh, oh, ha, ha, ha. oh this yeah. was designed very well. eep a -doo. So you can see the survivors the entire time. They can't see you at all. And your killer is staring directly at them, and they're not even paying attention. Like, they have no idea that he's over now, there. Now, can they see who you're choosing for survivors? No, or, yeah, they can see who you're choosing for survivors. So often. that can change. That can help them strategize who they're choosing as a killer. <laughs> it could. But now it can't, because... Once again, you could put any skill on any survivor now. Oh, okay. So, so now there's no way. That, uh, I could pick Fing Mei, but that doesn't mean that I'm going to have any of her perks. And actually, mm -hmm. honestly, at this point, besides the whispering mechanic or whatever the hell it was, where it makes my generator quieter, that's the only perk of hers that I have. Everything else is from somebody else. Everything Got it. Else. So you don't necessarily know. Yeah. Now, the perks, do they transfer this the same way they do for the survivors for killers? Yes. So you can have a killer that is known for being one thing that you put none of those it, things on. Well, it's kind of like the killers are kind of a tad bit different with the perks. So like their perks are more like generated around like all killers can use them. And then mm -hmm. certain of them have passives that don't go anywhere else. They're only on that killer. So like Michael Myers is terror radius. That's a passive for Michael Myers. You will only and ever Got have it. on Michael Myers. But there's stuff like they did this one barbecue event, which was fucking stupid. And they made this fucking goddamn perk for the killers called Hot Chili. And basically what happened was is that after they would hook somebody, it would reveal every survivor on the map for 15 seconds. Holy shit. So, because what, what normally happened is, it's like, let's say you are you got caught and you're getting hooked. I would follow behind the killer, crouch down so he couldn't see me, and get myself in position to immediately get you off the moment he's gone. Mm hmm And I guess that was too rough for the killers because they couldn't just walk around a fucking wall and wait there for fucking 10 seconds to see if somebody was fucking trying to save you. Because you can't well, save somebody instantly. They could. That's the hook guarding. That, that, that is the hook guarding. But and that's what I'm saying. It was never a problem. They they, they, they they did that anyway. But now they mm -hmm. just helped out the killers even more by giving them this fucking skill. And so now if the killer does that and I'm standing behind the wall waiting to grab you, it's automatically going to show him that I'm right there. Yeah. Literally shows my body and everything behind the wall. That's terrible. 
Yeah. They, they now, did they get rid of that, that, or is it still? No, present? it's still in the game. Yeah, it's still in the game. Oh no. Yeah, it's still in the game. I think it's called Hot Chili. It's something chili. And uh, you, you don't know if a killer has that, killer. correct? I don't know. Uh, yeah, you, you don't know anything about the killer at all. <sighs> Until after you've like come face to face with them and and seen the skills themselves, they also have hexes as well. I forgot about that. There's hexes Ooh. in the game that the killers can add on. It's like their little add-ons, like our toolboxes and shit. They can add on hexes, and these hexes can hexes can be stuff like once the doors are online, not open, but online, you can down people in one hit versus two. Oh, that could be incredibly helpful. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that one's called okay, like, no so one escapes alive or something like that. It's a game that's constantly updating and yep. nerfing and adding and all that kind of good yep. stuff in the hopes that they'll get a fairly balanced experience yep. for everybody to just go in, kill each other, save each other, and, and try to resolve. It's another one of those games where it's like this was the first one of its kind, kind of. Like there were some other mm -hmm. ones that were kind of like it, but not on this level. <clears throat> That's where it's made multiple other games companies make their own. Like Death Garden is one, Friday the 13th is one. Uh, there's some other survivor game that I, that we played on the channel. I can't remember what the name of it was. No, we recorded it for the channel. And then, unfortunately, I couldn't find a way to mute game chat. It just didn't exist. Mm -hmm. And there were a lot of very inappropriate things said through game chat that I physically could not take out. So, yeah, that yeah. got scrapped. But, yeah, that yeah, never saw the light of day. Um, but the game was fun. It was really, really good. It was a game that me and Evan had played. And the funny thing is, is like in that game, one of the survivors is the monster, but you don't know. So it's all trying to figure out out of, you know, talking or not. And everybody's running around with guns and shit like that. So you don't know who the survivor is until like you mm -hmm. catch them turn into this monster and try to fucking kill people as because they can only kill people as a monster. And they have a, a meter of when they'll die if they're not doing that. So they have to do it to stay alive. And they have to do it at opportune times because they want to not be caught. And I'll never forget, I turned to the monster to kill this guy, and this guy was screaming like, oh my god, he's the fucking monster, he's the fucking monster. And then Evan ran in there, and he's all like, who's the monster, who's the monster? I was like, dude, that fucking guy that just fucking died got gotten eaten by the other guy, you didn't fucking see that happen? He goes, no, where? Where that happened? I was like, right over there, and he turned right over there, and then I turned to the monster and fucking killed Evan, because his back was turned to me, and he trusted me, he thought that I was on his fucking team. Yeah, it was, uh. it was fun. I was like, right over there, dude. That's where it happened. I just, because like Evan came in the room because I started yelling with the guy, making it sound like I also was being affected. So then uh -huh. I just started shooting my pistol into a corner around the hallway. So then Evan ran in there. He's like, where'd he go? I was like, it's over there. It's over there. And I was like, still shooting my pistol. So he went to go run because he knew he was better at the game than I was because he had played it multiple times. And he went to go run. And I was just behind him. And I just turned into the monster and just fucking killed him. Ah. Uh. <clears throat> yeah. The moment fun. you get into a game like that, you can't trust anybody. Oh, fuck, no, no. I, I remember used to getting around with a whole bunch of friends and playing werewolves and shit. Oh, man, I I will lie my ass off. Easily. Easily. Don't give a I shit. I have a really good friend. I don't like werewolves. I don't like playing it. But I have a really good friend who, he he talks constantly. He And I, I don't mean constantly. He talks a lot. And we can always tell the moment he is... The werewolf or the the whatever in this situation, the mafia, the bad guy, Hitler, any of those things, <coughs> we can always tell because he stops talking. It's uh -huh. like it's awfully quiet in here. It's definitely you. <laughs> and he's tried. He and I have both tried when we're playing these games to be quiet when we can be quiet, and, and we're not it to like slowly change how people think about us. Doesn't work. Yeah, doesn't work at all. That's funny. Yeah, I got this buddy. Um, we had all went out to the Wisconsin Dells, and we were out there just, like, doing a picnic and stuff, and there's like, 12 of us or something, and so we had brought werewolves, and so we were out there playing at the park, and uh, I, I, everybody always wants me to be the, 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 the scene setter, if you will, you know, kind of walk everybody through the game. I'm always the host. Those those DM, DM, yeah, the DM skills. Yeah, the DM skills definitely transfer yep. over to every fucking game I play, apparently. And um, <laughs> so I'm normally never a player. I'm usually always the fucking person that's hosting it, but that's fine. I actually like it. I enjoy it. But um, I was like, all right, now werewolves open your eyes. I was like, and now choose who it is that you want to kill. And the person that I'm talking about, he always likes to clear his throat. So like, we immediately asked the werewolves, now open your eyes. And he's like, and I was like, and now choose who you want to kill. And all of a sudden you hear, 
And I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> so then literally everybody the next morning voted to hang that one person. And guess what? They found out real quick who was the werewolf. So I was like, yep. well, that was a quick game. <laughs> oh, man. Indeed. Yeah, it was pretty fucking funny. So yeah, no, I mean, like I said, this game spawned a whole bunch of other games and kind of made its own game genre, which is kind of cool when games can do that. For instance, like PUBG, you know, a lot of people don't fucking play PUBG anymore. Without PUBG, we wouldn't have Fortnite. I mean, unfortunately, we have Fortnite. We would have Fortnite and other things like, you know, Call of Duty's doing the fucking Battle Royales and shit like that, too. It's just one of those games that starts something, and now everybody fucking wants to do it. So, Who made this game, by the way? Uh, that was uh, Behavior Interactive is their name. Just dawned on me. That was definitely a question I should have asked earlier than now. <laughs> yeah. Behavior so, Interactive. Is there – one of the questions I have, I have, a, I have a Word document open for the audience. Just to peek behind the curtain here. I have a Word document open where I always have prompts to remind me that there are certain questions I should ask. One of those is major romances. I'm going to guess there isn't any. No, there's not. <laughs> okay. If there is, it's all in the fan fiction. Uh, are there there's, any music There's probably songs? a lot of that out there. Uh, I don't want to think about that. There's a lot of that out there. I don't need that image in my head. Um, so as far as like music and stuff goes, I mean, it's just the normal, just creepy music. It's nothing like crazy. Like they have like some kind of, I mean, I'm sure they probably have soundtrack. Every fucking video game does these days, but it's nothing, but nothing notable, nothing notable. Okay. And then fighting, obviously there has to be some form of fighting in this, or is it just fleeing and overpowering? Yeah. Fleeing and overpowering. Yep. 100%. The killer has, but that's. That's one of the reasons why I don't like how much the killer is heavily favored because the survivors can't fight. If they could fight, that would be a different story, but they physically can't. Which people argue, oh, yeah, but you could stun us with a flashlight. It's like, yeah, cool. I shine a flashlight in your ass for five seconds. The flashlight has a battery. Whenever it runs out, that's it. So I get like fucking ten flashes, and then that's it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Is there anything else that you can think of that I really need to know about Dead by Daylight? Not really. It pretty much about covers the basis of the game. I mean, I think you could pick up a controller and play it if you wanted to, which you won't, but... I will not, no. No. I would only play this if I was at your house, we were drinking, and you're like, I absolutely really want you to play this kind of thing. And it'd be like, all right, I'll give it a shot. All right, well, now we know. You would have much better luck getting Scott to play at some point when we visit you, and then, like, once he starts playing, then I'll be, like, drug into it at that point. So I just got to get Scott on my team is what you're saying. The yes. No, that's, that's, you that's, that, you that is play. the most effective way. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> Making All right, plans. Do you, have... <laughs> do you have a final quiz for me, my friend? Uh, yes, I do. All right. So from the top, who are the developers of Dead by Daylight? Behavior Interactive. When was Dead by Daylight released? Crapola. 2018? Ooh. Six fourteen sixteen. Dang it! All right. You you guessed twenty seventeen earlier, and I said close. I like how you went twenty eighteen. I know, so close. It's like, oh, I'll go up. What platform was it released on? Um, I asked you about the platforms, and you gave me the platforms it was on. I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna go with my original guess, Xbox. Yeah. Or just was it all of those that it was it, released it, on? It is all of those. It was released on oh, all. okay, great. It's even on the Switch now. Yeah, it's, it's released on all of yeah. them. Okay, it was originally <clears> released. <throat> what genre? You already got horror on that one. That one horror. was correct. And then the next one was what were the two selections the characters can or of characters the players can choose from, which was Survivor and Killer. You got that one as well. So what is the player ratio for the game? So Survivor to Killer. Four to one. All right. How many times can you be caught by the killer? Three. Well, infinite yep. if he doesn't hook you. Well, I'm in my I'm in my you. hook thing getting thrown out. Yep, you're good. Yeah. How many exits are there? There are two normal doors and one trap door. How many famous killers are in the game, and what are their names? Um, r- the ones that you specifically brought up were Freddy Krueger and Michael Myers. Yep. Yep. Two. Mm-hmm. Why is Jason not in the game? Because a different video game company already had the rights and made a similar game. Yep, exactly. Sweet. There you go. Boom, hey, boom. I listened. <laughs> boom, boom. <laughs> Do you have any other final thoughts on Dead by Daylight on like what makes it a great game, who you should play it with, when you should play it, etc.? 
I mean, I would definitely play it with people. I mean, whether you have friends or not that play it, I mean, there's obviously always message boards and stuff like that, too. People do get kind of pissy if you don't do anything. It is a, definitely a toxic community. Um, mm. That's for sure. Uh, but I mean, Are there any of these online multiplayer games where you just jump into a room that are not toxic? Any of them? Yeah. There definitely are. It just depends okay. on what game type you play. Like, for instance, I know one of the ones I talk about being toxic all the time is League. Yeah. But, like, even if you want to play League and you just jumped in and played TFT, because it doesn't really matter if you do bad or not, you're just going to be easy kills for someone else. No one's going to talk shit to you. <laughs> They're not going to care. Okay. But, like, for instance, if playing, like, on an actual team, I mean, you're probably going to get shit talked regardless of what you ever play or ever do. But, I mean, Smite's pretty lenient depending on what game mode you pick. If you do something like Arena, because no one takes Arena seriously, or Clash, then people are less likely to talk shit to you versus you jumping into, like, Conquest, which that's me devoting 40 to fucking 60 minutes of my time for you to fucking suck at the game. So, yeah, people normally get pretty pissed off. So That's that's fair. Is there a function in that game to learn? Yep, there's bots. So you- Yep, that is my normal okay. response whenever people start talking shit to me. And then I look at the scoreboard and see that they're doing way worse than I am. I'm like, how about you go fucking play against the bots before you come get in the fucking game with the big boys? How about that? Before we start running Ooh, my mouth. Oh, all right. Yeah, yeah, so you're happened. adding your own sass to the mix. Oh, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're all shocked. Ooh. My favorite one is whenever like someone talks shit and then they leave. And it's like they, you look at how, how bad they did. Because I'm one of those people, I like confrontation. I 100% love confrontation. So, like, whenever someone talks shit to me, I don't send a message back like everybody else does. I invite them to the party. If they physically won't jump in my party to physically talk to me, I honestly don't give a shit about what you have to say after that. Because you're too scared to get in my party to even fucking talk to me. So, if you want to talk shit, jump in my party. If not, then shut the fuck up. All right? That's how I look at it. But my one of my favorite ones is whenever I just say... Please do me a favor and uninstall this game so I never get the unfortunate chance of being linked up with you in a party again. Ouch. Holy crap. Only when people talk shit to me. I don't ever just randomly jump on somebody for being bad because I've been there. That happens. Mm-hmm. But whenever someone literally is doing worse than me and they blame it on me, like that that was the worst part about being a jungle main was because they'd be like, well, the jungle would never gank my lane. You should still not die as much as you did. Regardless whether I'm over there or not, you should still not die as much as you did. You kept yeah, dying. you shouldn't be relying on which me. Which fed the, the other part of the team, which made that team stronger than you, which just forced you to keep fucking dying. That is your fault. Don't blame it on me. I came over there and ganked. I just didn't stay in your lane the entire time because if I do that, then guess what? I get under level compared to the other jungle because they're now taking our jungle because I'm too busy babysitting your fucking ass. So yep. then I'm behind and then I die and then therefore you just say, well, my jungle fucking sucks. Exactly. So at the end of the day, if you're going to jungle one from one jungler to another, do your business. If someone else is constantly you. dying, let them die. That's fine. Fuck them. All right. You do your job, because at the end of the day, whenever someone talks shit to me, my favorite thing to say is, who's higher on the board? And leave it at that. Who's higher I'm, on the board? I'm very glad we're giving jungle advice yes. in our Dead by Daylight yes, DFU. Yes, exactly. All right, jungle, solid jungle advice. Dead by Daylight advice, I, I mean, just don't be dumb, man. Like, don't be dumb. <laughs> like, people do dumb shit. They, they like to get cocky. Like, oh, I'll fucking, I'll go fucking train the killer. Like, ah, chase me. They'll never catch me. I'm too good. And then they get hit and they're like, what? That's cheating. How'd that happen? Because you're a fucking idiot and you decide to go fuck with the killer thinking you're going to be a goddamn hero and keep him occupied for the 20 minutes it's going to take us to get all these fucking generators going. Of course you fucking went down. Now you're going to die. Now we have less time to fucking get this done because now he only has three people to chase versus fucking four. Thank you. <clears throat> Don't be an idiot. So you hear, heard it here, everybody. That is the advice on Dead by Daylight. Don't be an idiot. Yeah. I think that was said on The Office. Yeah. Where Dwight was like the best best advice Michael Scott ever gave to him was don't be an idiot. He goes, it literally has changed my life. He's like, anytime I go to think about doing something, I go, but would an idiot do that? And if so, I choose not to do it. So there you go. Don't be an idiot. From me to you. 
If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe to our channel. It'd be very helpful to us. You can also turn on those notifications so anytime we upload a video, you will know to come to class and come and hang out with us. Please come and interact with us in the comments below or on the Twitter or Twitch links that are also below. We've got people that play games. I want to do a quick shout out. Chris is doing a ton of Twitch stuff right now. And so you should see a little symbol up above his face. Mm -hmm. Go click on that. Go to his Twitch. Watch him play. He's very fun. It's a very active and involved community. And you're going to have a great time time mm -hmm. and we hope that you enjoy this content we hope you'll see you in, we will see you in the next class bye friends <laughs>